So I've mainly been using this YouTube channel for book reviews, but I wanted to talk a little bit about boots, because um, that's kind of the other thing that I spend a lot of money on recently. Um, and a couple months ago, uh, back in, like at the start of December, I think, I ordered a pair of boots from Jackrabbit's Bootmakers. Um, they are an Indonesian company. Um, there's a lot of, uh, like, handmade boot companies in Indonesia um, that have been pre pretty popular among um, heritage boot enthusiasts for the past few years. I wanted to sort of check that scene out, um, and I specifically went with um, Jackrabbits because um, out, of, out of the main Indonesian brands that I've seen people talk about, they were the ones with the most functional website. Um, I think Sagara has a decent website, um, but not quite as good as Jackrabbit's, and also Sagara's price range is like a solid 200 US dollars above Jackrabbit's. Um, so I, I, I went with Jackrabbit's. A lot of the other Indonesian bootmakers um, have you order through like Instagram DMs or WhatsApp, um, stuff like that. Some of them don't even have a PayPal. You have to do like direct bank transfers and like, I don't know, like the, there's, there's like reviews of all these brands out there and like logically I know it's fine and they're trustworthy, but just like, I tend to be nervous about stuff like that. So I wanted to order through a website. I just like felt better about that. Um, I am really happy with the result though. So <clears throat> these, um, so these are obviously a split toe. Um, I also did a Norwegian welt, um, and I went with the natural leather. Um, this is they they have two different natural leathers. They have a domestic like Indonesian one, which is what I went with, and then they also offer um, a pueblo bone, which is um, a natural undyed leather from Badalasi. They have, they have a couple um, Badalasi leathers, including the, the purple one, which I think I'm going to try next if I order from this company again. Because um, it's, it's surprisingly hard to find purple boots. Um, well, I mean, obviously, like, Doc Martens and Solivare do purple, and, like, lots of, like, cheap boots do purple, but, like, f from, like, this realm of boots, it's really hard to find purple. Um, lots of red, lots of burgundy, um, lots of brown that's labeled quote-unquote burgundy um, and maybe has a little bit of burgundy in the right in the right lighting after it ages for a couple years um, but not a lot of purple um, <clears throat> yeah so so I might do that next but anyways yeah so this this was natural um, there's pictures on my Instagram of what they looked like when I first got them they were almost sort of like a like cream like off-white type of color um, when I first got them, I conditioned them right out of the box, and that like immediately darkened them a little bit. And then after some wear, they're they're starting already to turn into more of like a, a tan, or you know, it, I I think eventually they're going to be like a light brown color. Um, and I I don't know, I just I liked the idea of getting um, natural leather rather than something that was already dyed light brown because this is going to be like a very uneven like patina of light brown when they when they age and I'm excited about that um <clears throat> so as for how they feel oh and um so price point before I get into talking about how they feel and how they look and all of that um so Jackrabbit's boots start at three hundred and nine dollars, and that's that's what these were because I didn't go for any of the options that up the price. If you want to use a leather that is not like one of their domestic leathers, um, that bumps it up a bit. Badalasi adds seventy dollars. Um, they also have some Horween options that bumps it up ninety dollars to four hundred. Um, and then also the sole, they have like a, I went with one of their proprietary soles that's like got sort of a day-night style stud pattern, um, but in a half sole rather than a full sole. Um, 
you can also get um, Vibram or Dr. Soul um, Souls put on there, but that'll that'll up the price. I think thirty dollars extra for Vibram and forty for Dr. Soul, or it might be the other way around. Um, but yeah, so there are there are other options, and like if you max out all of that stuff, it comes out to like four hundred and twenty something, um, or four nineteen maybe, um, and yeah, that sounds right. Um, but yeah, these these were three hundred and ten dollars. Um, and I don't, I don't think I was charged for shipping. I think there was probably some sales tax, but I don't remember being charged charged for shipping. So yeah, I mean, the, the, this is like um, the same price point as like Allen Edmonds on sale, or like roughly the same price point as Grant Stone. Um, and I think it's it's comparable to those in quality. I haven't worn Grant Stone yet. I'm probably going to get some at some point. Um, I do have a pair of Allen Edmonds, um, and these definitely feel a lot sturdier than Allen Edmonds boots. Um, although, to be fair, the Allen Edmonds boots that I have are suede, so that's always going to be like thinner um, than a smooth leather. Um, but yeah, overall, these are just, like, super hefty, super durable. I wanted these to be my, like, adventure boots, you know, um, when I'm, like, going on, like, a trip or, or going camping and stuff like that. Um, I took these on a trip to New Orleans to visit some friends. I walked, like, probably, like, 7 to 10 miles a day for four days around New Orleans, which, um, if you've ever been to New Orleans, the you, you know that the sidewalks there... Are terrible. Um, it would be a really rough city to to be in if you were using any kind of mobility device. Like I, I was thinking about that while I was there because um, my my girlfriend has a couple family members who who use wheelchairs, and I was I was just thinking about like what a nightmare it would be to to travel to New Orleans as someone in a wheelchair. But I, kind of getting off on a tangent there. But yeah, the the sidewalks are a nightmare in New Orleans. So these saw a lot of a lot of rough conditions i you know um <clears throat> where was i going with that oh yeah so so these have been been broken in a bit um i yeah oh that's what i was saying i wanted them to be my like adventure boots i'm probably going to take them on a trip to india over the summer although um i'm going during monsoon season and i'm also packing a pair of sandals so i'm probably going to wear the sandals a lot more but if there's like one day that it doesn't rain, these are going to come out. Um, yeah, so I went, I went with a split toe, which I really, I really like how it turned out. Um, and I went with that because, like I said, I wanted these to be my like rugged, casual, outdoors boots. But I like to be a little bit dressed up, even when I'm going for that kind of vibe. Um, and I feel like the split toe is perfect for that because it's, 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 it's like. It's, it's, uh, the, the split toe, I feel like, is, aesthetically, it's a mock toe for people who wear a lot of blazers. That's, that's what I feel like the split toe is, aesthetically. And then, you know, you have to pair that with a Norwegian welt, just thematically, I feel like. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I, I really like it. I might... The, the one thing about the Norwegian Walt is that when it comes time to resole these, I think it is kind of a hassle to find a cobbler who will do Norwegian Walts. Um, and honestly, I might even look into whether it would be possible to like recraft this as just a normal flat welt because it's really cool, but it, I feel like it's going to be a nightmare to get these resold. I don't know. We'll see. I've got a couple years to figure that out. Um, I will say, so these proprietary soles that they have, the, the Jackrabbits brand soles, I don't know if it, my camera's not going to pick it up, but the heel is wearing down pretty fast, like just from that, you know, 30 or 40 miles of walking around New Orleans and then wearing them probably, like, probably only worn them like 10 times so far other than that trip, um, the heel is already showing some wear, which does make me a little nervous. Like, I'm probably going to have to get the, the heel top lift replaced within, like, a year or two. But I might not need to do a full resole for a while after that because the toe looks fine. Um, 
But yeah, um, as far as sizing, um, like a lot of the Indonesian bootmakers, when you order from Jackrabbits, they are just going to um, reach out to you and ask you to like trace your foot onto a piece of paper, send them the measurements, and they'll tell you what size they recommend based on that. There is an option on their order form to say like, build to the size I select, but it, uh, even if you do that, they're still going to ask for your measurements, so I, I wouldn't even bother trying to figure it out on your own. Just let them decide, because they're going to anyway, um, bottom line. And uh, so I don't, the thing about that is I don't know what size we actually decided on. Like I just, I, I think I initially on the order form put um, size 44, they use European sizing, and I, I typically wear um, 11D in boots. Um, in sneakers, I'm like an 11 and a half or a 12 sometimes. Um, and I haven't been measured on a Branock device, but I think based on the like measurements that I did with a tape measure, I think my true Branock size would be 11 and a half D on the left foot and 11 and a half E on the right foot. Um, and that would track because my, my boot size, what I've been wearing in like Thursday and Allen Edmonds is 11D. And that's a little bit snug on the right foot that I think might actually be an E. Um, and I'm fine with that. I would rather have it be snug on one foot and fit the other perfect than fit one perfect and have the other one be loose. Um, but I think they might have actually given me an E width on these based on my measurements because they do... Here, let me... Let me grab, um, here's the Allen Edmonds boots that I have, and if we compare, oh, let me get, let me get the one that I actually want that'll match up. Um, if I compare, you can see, I don't know if you can see, but the, when I put them up against each other, the Jackrabbit boot peeks out on the side a little bit. It's, it's not like significantly wider but or not like dramatically wider but I think kind of significantly but that could also be the last I went with um the Hornady last which is one of their more almond shaped lasts um which I was a little bit nervous about especially given that um my toes are kind of wide especially on the right foot um, and I think maybe they did give me an E width to account for that. I, I, again, I don't know. I think I put D on the order form, but then they like reached out to verify and I sent my measurements and I think they might've changed it. So I don't know. Um, but they fit great. Bottom line, they fit great. I don't know what size they gave me, but just give them your measurements. They know what they're doing and, and they do a great job. Um, these fit better than almost anything else I've ever worn. My Allen Edmonds in 11D do fit pretty good, but again, those are suede, um, and I think it's an unstructured toe, so that's going to have a little bit of stretch. Yeah, it's suede and the toe is unstructured, so yeah, th those are, those are going to fit fine even if they are technically a little narrow on the right foot. Um, but yeah, these fit perfect um, on both feet somehow, and I, I, d I don't think they gave me two different widths though. Um, cause they look pretty similar next to each other. I don't know. We'll let the audience decide. What do you think? Yeah. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, these are, these are great. Um, I, I definitely recommend, I think I'm going to be ordering from them again. Like I said, I think I want to get, um, I think if I got this same last, but with a, um, they, they have on their site, it's labeled uh, U-tip toe. That's um, basically just like a, like a fake mock toe stitch. They offer actual mock toes as well. But I want to get the fake mock toe, which would be just this without this part. It would be just this part. And if I got that on this last, I think it would be really similar to the Grant Stone um, brass boot maybe. Um, or almost kind of similar to the Alden Indy as well, um, but I want to get it in that purple, which neither Grant Stone nor Alden offer anything in purple, so that would be pretty sick. Also, Alden is way out of my budget anyways, 
you know, I've, I, I can, I can, now that I, like, have gotten into this, this type of boot, and, like, am into the idea of investing in a boot that I'll be able to wear for 10 or 20 years, I can justify spending three or four hundred, but I don't know about six or seven. That might, that might have to wait until I, like, I don't know, publish a novel or something. We'll see. Um, but yeah, you might sporadically see boot reviews on this channel now. Still gonna keep it to mostly book reviews because I really shouldn't be buying boots that often anyway. Um, but Jackrabbits, they're great. I recommend. Um, follow my Instagram if you want to see updates every couple months about how the, the patina on these develops. I'm really excited to see that. Um, I'm trying to think, was there anything else I wanted to say about them? Um, the fit's perfect, just send them your measurements, they'll ask for them anyway. Um, yeah, I talked about the price, talked about why I wanted the natural leather, and it's, it's starting to age pretty, pretty nicely already. Um, compared the, the fit to my other boots, I think that was it. These are great. I'll see you next time.